right next to me is a vehicle that I believe can be the best selling crossover SUV of 2025. This is the 2025 Mazda CX-50 Hybrid Premium. Now, why do I say this can be the best selling crossover SUV? It's because this vehicle is in partnership with Toyota. Well, where? That's the hybrid system. The powertrain of this vehicle is all Toyotas. It's straight off from the RAV4. So this vehicle has the reliability of Toyota and the luxury of Mazda all built into one vehicle. Mazda and Toyota have had a little partnership going on for a while now. They have a factory, a Toyota Mazda specific factory in Madison, Alabama, where this vehicle is manufactured, the RAV4 is, and other Toyota vehicles. So this vehicle might be more American than other American manufactured vehicles. But the real question is, is it worth the price tag? This vehicle after options and delivery fee, cause that would to be $40,000. Is it worth it? Well, let's see. Huge thank you to Liberty Mazda of Hartford, Connecticut for allowing me to use this vehicle for the day. Their information will be linked down in the description below. Let's dive right into it and talk about the front of the vehicle because recently Mazda has been nailing the fronts of their vehicles and this is one of them that just is so perfect. It doesn't look cheap at all. It looks very luxurious, very nice. This, even though that this is plastic here, they kind of put paint on it, they make it look more premium. Now that's actually a ton of airflow for that engine there and then a ton of airflow down there. Mazda logo right front and center, everyone knows exactly what you're driving. This piece right here is probably one of the coolest in a lot of vehicles. I'll show up here, it's more rugged, aggressive. It makes this thing look super nice. The headlights tuck in an angry shape. Mazda has given a lot of the vehicles very angry shapes that look more race car-y. I know people are gonna get mad at that, but they look more race car-y and they don't need to, but it works. This vehicle has LED headlights, LED daytime running lights, and LED turn signals, but that's down here. The turn signals are down here, different from the headlights up there, which is pretty weird, but it makes it look cool. This part here is mostly fake. Up top here is just fake, but actually this little bit down here is real airflow. So this sucks air through the side of the vehicle to improve the aerodynamics. Now, this is plastic. I know a lot of people don't like that on the Mazdas. They wish the whole thing was body color, not this kind of black plasticky because they do it on the sides as well. People particularly don't like that, but I think it makes it kind of a different contrast, makes it look pretty cool. And then under here, if this gets scratched or anything, it might be easier to replace than this. You don't have to get it all painted or everything. Below the license plate, there's this weird little plastic piece right here. What is this? Well, that's your radar for adaptive cruise control. And then this vehicle has an 8.6 inch ground clearance, which is actually pretty good for a vehicle like this. Under the hood is Toyota. Now, what do I mean by that? Cause you're probably seeing there's a Mazda logo there. This is a Toyota RAV4 engine and hybrid system, three motor hybrid system. It's just a Mazda logo slapped on there, but this is all Toyota's technology. So it's a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine paired with a three motor hybrid system, making 219 horsepower and 176 foot pounds of torque. Now you're probably thinking, okay, that's not really crazy powerful numbers. I wish it was a little more. Well, this is not tuned for power fast. It's tuned for fuel efficiency. So this is going through a CVT transmission and all that power is going to all four wheels because it's all wheel drive. And this vehicle gets gets an average of 38 miles to the gallon. So that's what this vehicle is tuned for, efficiency, not power. So you kind of got to weigh your odds. And I do want to point out one spot where it says Toyota. I don't know if I'll be able to show it to you, but if you see right there, that sticker says Toyota. The key fob of this vehicle is very simple, but yet luxurious. It's black plastic, Mazda logo there. Looks like a little briefcase. Now you have this metal trim on this side, and this is where all the buttons are. So lock, unlock, the typical stuff. Hold this, the trunk should open up. And now that it's up, just hold it again, and the trunk should shut. And there it goes. Now below it, you do have your panic button. And now there is no remote start built on the key fob, but I'm pretty sure it's through the app. I don't know if it, you have to pay for it. I'll look it up and put it right below in the video and let you know. It's actually kind of funny. I'm just about the height of the vehicle. I mean, the vehicle's a little bit lower. I'm 5'8", so this has to be like 5'6 or 5'7". There is a panoramic sunroof up here. These mirrors have blind spot monitoring built into them, so that will blink when the vehicle comes on the side. These have turn signals also built into them, which I'll pan to and show you. These are 17 inch alloy rims with all season weather tires. Then you got this black plastic cladding there. Again, some people like that, some people don't. You get it dirty, you just shoom, quickly wash away with a wipe. You don't have to worry about paint getting scratched. A little dip in there, I kind of like that. The hybrid badge over on the side, so people know it's a hybrid. Then with keys in your pocket, just go up, hit this button, the vehicle locks. Then if you want to unlock it, hold that, and it should, let's see, 
Yep. And it unlocks. Open up the rear door and you're greeted to half and half. So half hard touch plastic and then half leather type material. So the hard touch plastic goes all the way to the top bottom. That's how you want it to be plastic though because you put drink snacks, wash it away. This is the leather type material. So this is exactly where you want it. Your armrest right there, nice and squishy, nice and squishy there, window controls, and then a little door handle speaker grill. Now hopping in the rear, how is it? Now these are all leather trim seats and they're the same leather trim as the front. So the front and the rear are both luxurious in a way. It's not like you're sitting in the rear, you're going to get gypped out. Now this is set to my driving position. I'm 5'8 and I got a decent amount of leg room here. That's not bad. Let's see headroom. It's a little tight. Nothing, you know, crazy, but I probably have what, one or two more inches. I guess if I were to move more where the sunroof is, then I got like three, four. So if you're six foot tall, definitely lean over there. Two AC vents, two USB type C ports, and there is a big middle hump. So how is the middle seat? Let's see. Now, if I was to sit like this, it's actually not that bad. I thought a lot of middle humps are like crazy. This is actually not bad, but you probably want a man spread in this vehicle. And that still leaves a pretty good amount of room for three adults to fit in here, totally fine. Now this vehicle does come with a cup holder armrest. So pull this down, two cup holder spots there. Nice plush leather trim to rest your arm. And these seats have headrests that can pop up on you know all three seats. You have a little light control there, a little handle in case your friend's going crazy. Open up the front door and you're greeted to actually very nice materials up here. It's way different from the rear. You have soft touch plastic up here, this cool kind of plasticky trim, and then this leather trim piece there with the orange stitching, same with all the seats in the front and the rear. Then you have this leather trim piece here to rest your arm, same with the rear, nice squishy plastic spot there to put drink snacks, gets dirty, wash it away. You have two speaker controls or speaker grill, sorry, Bose sound system. Then four window controls. I'm pretty sure these are all one touch down, one touch up. I'll make sure in a second, but your window controls and then grab handle. And yes, these are all one touch. There's one touch down and one touch down for both things and then hit it back up and it goes up. Both the front seats are heated, power operated, leather trim bucket seats, that cool orange stitching there. Now the driver has forward back, up, down, tilt and lumbar. The passenger just says the forward back, and tilt, it does not have the lumbar controls. Before turning on the vehicle, you're greeted to nothing. There is absolutely nothing in this digital gauge until you go and turn the power on and then all the screens light up. And after the beeping stops, you're greeted to the full digital gauge that makes it look like analog. So it's actually pretty cool because you have this analog charge and power because it's a hybrid vehicle there. So when you step on it, instead of your RPMs, that'll kind of go up for power. And then when you're slowing down, that'll go back and charging the hybrid battery. In the center here is your gear selector or your gear kind of position. And then it's more of like a Tesla kind of a digital speedometer. So you have the vehicle in the middle and then a digital speedometer there. But if you don't want that, you want more analog, just hit that and then you go back to kind of an analog thing over here on the side is your engine temperature your fuel but that's it with this vehicle that that is actually it there's no other customization options with this i think if you hit this one more time though you can get some other like average fuel economy but that's really it. I wish Mazda would make these kind of all customizable in different kind of settings. It would make it kind of cool. This vehicle is a leather wrapped, non-heated steering wheel. It's actually very thin compared to other cars. I like it a lot better than the thick steering wheels. No paddle shifters in the back. This is your volume control, skip music, go forward and back. Your voice commands, hang up the phone call. That little info buttons, change that little screen to showed you earlier. This is some of your safety controls. So this has adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, attention or driver attention warning. And then if you put it in reverse, you have a backup camera with non-moving trajectory lines. It is very, very clear though. That is like the clearest backup camera I think I've ever seen in a car, but I wish the trajectory lines moved. The screen in this vehicle has wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay, but it is not a touch screen through Mazda's specific home screen. You have to use a dial here. So it's very odd, but you kind of scroll down, go to navigation, go to entertainment, and then let's say I want navigation. So just tap that, and then you go into your navigation and then you want to hit back, back, home, music, navigation, super easy, nice to use. That's actually a little favorites key. So if you hold that, I'm pretty sure you hold it right or tap it. So you can have certain radio stations, certain navigation set as favorites. So instead of going crazy, going, looking up different things, you go here, you want McDonald's or your house, you set that and it'll guide you to the place. But where does the touchscreen part come involved? Because I'm, look at, I'm in this X and nothing's working. Well, that's with the Android Auto Apple CarPlay. So if I go here, I have my phone hooked up through Android Auto right now. You scroll this little thing down, hit the little button, and then now I'm in Android Auto. So I can go through, hit this, scroll through all my apps here, and just go shoot, shoot, 
And let's say I wanna go back to the Masa screen, just hit that, and now I'm back to where I can't use a touch screen. Mazda thinks that it's safer to not use a touch screen, it's to use the dial, but they allow it for the Android Auto Apple CarPlay. It's kind of odd, but it makes this car very unique. Below the screen, you have physical AC controls. Yes, Mazda, we want physical controls, not through the touch screen like other manufacturers, all physical. It's dual zone climate, so they can adjust. I can have it extremely cold, the other person can have it extremely hot if they want, and it's super simple, fan speed up, down, turn off AC, these are your heated seat controls. And then I wanna talk about the trim in this vehicle. This is all the leather trim. It is super nice, luxurious, and it kind of extends all the way to the seat there and to the seat here. This cabin is extremely luxurious. Then right below there, you have this cigarette outlet port to plug in a phone, a little spot to, I guess, rest a phone, but you do have a wireless charging pad here. So you have a wireless charging pad there, so put your phone in. I guess this is a spot to put coins, snacks, or another phone if you want. Two slots for cup holders. Then you have a leather trimmed gear shifter there with a sport mode in it. But then what is this? Well, I guess that's also to change to sport mode. It's their MI drive. But what's funny is you go here and oop, if I can show you, you have power, normal, and trail. I don't think I've ever seen a power mode in a vehicle. I think that's cool. That's like their sport mode, but hey, we got power. You know, it's kind of cool. And then it changes the gauge to red. I like that a lot. Then this is the controls that I showed you earlier. And you have kind of a leather trimmed armrest here and it opens up like, boom, like barn doors and then two USB type C ports in there, a little spot for extra storage. I'll open my camera stuff in there and then close it up. And yes, I did skip over this button here. It's an EV button. So you can turn this vehicle into a full electric vehicle for, I guess, a period of time. So with that, and it goes into EV mode from just EV to EV mode. And now what this is, is this vehicle can be fully electrically driven for under 20 miles an hour. So if you're going five miles an hour, perfect, good. 10 miles, good. But once you hit over 20 or it sees rough acceleration, it'll switch into the hybrid mode and kick in that engine. So you can drive this in full electric for some part. I talked about it earlier, but this vehicle has a full panoramic sunroof. So just hit this button and then the sunshade to start going back. But the problem that I have is how far this sunroof opens up. Now look at this whole thing's a sunroof here, but you would expect, okay, maybe this kind of can go over to there. No, you hit that, let's say I'm gonna hold it this time, and then it just stops there. It only goes halfway. So I could barely stick my body out there if I want to. I could stick my arm, that's really it. Coming out to the rear of the vehicle, it might be arguably better than the front. Let me know in the comments below if you believe that. But this vehicle has LED taillights, LED turn signals, and they're superly aggressive just like the front is. You have the CX-50 all-wheel drive badge here. In the middle, you have the Mazda logo. Right below that, you have your parking or your parking camera. And then all the way on that side, which I'll pan to it, you have your hybrid badge. This here is just fake. Like the front, it actually had some airflow down here. This is just all fake. It makes it look cool, but I wish it was actually real and had some airflow just like the front. This plastic down here, and then you have two dual exhaust tips, but there is no parking sensors on this vehicle, the front and back. So if I wanted to back up, I'm gonna just hit you guys. It's not gonna tell me to stop hitting you guys. It just will go straight in. Now I can see on the backup camera, okay, I shouldn't hit you guys, but it's not gonna emergency brake. It's not gonna do anything or beep at me. It'll just let me kind of go into you. And then up here, you have your wiper blade and then a third LED brake light. Now, how is the trunk space in this vehicle? Well, that's actually incredible. So hit that button and the trunk automatically opens up and you have a ton of space. This is a more smaller crossover SUV, but look at, I can fit one mat and then two. I mean, you could take out this little like thing here if you want, but that'll fit two whole mats in here. Then you have a little cigarette lighter port here, an extra storage pocket this side, and then an extra storage pocket over here with a little shelf that's actually kind of nice because you could pop this out if you don't want to, but then put it there and items won't roll around. But if you even want more storage, just hit these little tabs and those seats will just fly down. Just simple tab like that. I don't have to push them down like other vehicles, just simple boop and they go straight down. A kid can do that. I love how, how simple it is. And now if I wanna lay a whole cabinet in here, I can just take this little piece out. I actually pre-took it out because this was actually very hard to take out, so watch out. But when you'd have that out, put that down on the ground. And now I can lay down here, put a whole cabinet in here if I want and relax. Let's see, did Mazda include a spare tire in this vehicle or fix a flat? Lift this up and you got a spare tire. Taking the Mazda CX-50 hybrid on the road, how does it feel? Well, it just feels like a Mazda CX-50, which actually is a good thing. Now, people are probably worried that, okay, it has a Toyota powertrain in there. It's gonna feel completely different than a normal CX-50. No, it, it just 
totally fine. I reviewed a Mazda CX-50 and it just feels the same. Now you do have a little bit of road noise with the tires because they're more kind of like that bigger tires, but they're totally fine. There's no other road noise you hear besides those tires. So it's actually very good. And the handling, it's star if you guys are going to fly in there. It's actually very good for a bigger vehicle like this. And now if I want to go into, I'll actually come off of the stop sign right here and I'll hit the brakes decently hard. So let's see. Okay, yeah, it definitely stops when you want it to. And let me do a quick acceleration test because I know this vehicle is not quick. I think it's like zero to 60 in like 8.7 or 7.6. Don't quote me on it. I'll put the exact information up there. So it's not supposed to be a quick car and it, it gets up to speed, but again, the hybrid system's not tuned for power. It's tuned for the high, you know, fuel efficiency. And what if I want to go into full EV mode here? So right now I just popped it in full EV mode. You really have to go slow for it. I'm going 15 miles an hour right now. If I flip over again, 18, 19, 20, it's going to cancel it. So you have to go very, very slow for this. Now I'm at 17, so I'm getting very close. It's hard to go kind of at a slow speed like this but it's super chill, super calm. It, this car just is chill. You're just gonna be driving and not notice anything about the driving aspect. You're not gonna notice that it's a hybrid at all. You're gonna think, okay, I'm driving a normal gasoline engine without a hybrid, but you're getting the benefits of the, the miles per gallon on it. It's really nice what Mazda has done with this vehicle. But the real question is, what do you think about this vehicle? Do you like it or do you absolutely hate it? Do you think the Toyota Mazda partnership is good or is that bad? Let me know in the comments below. And do you think it's worth the $40,000? Be honest, let me know about that. And please remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell to keep updated with more content. And a huge thank you to Liberty Mazda of Hartford, Connecticut for allowing me to use this vehicle for the day. Their information will be linked down in the description below. Also, is my claim right? Will this be one of the best-selling vehicles of 2025? I don't know. Let's see.